What's up everybody, welcome back for another lit video. In today's video, we're going to be telling y'all and teaching y'all how to unlock your motor if your motor on your riding lawnmower is froze up. And we're going to be teaching y'all how to do it on the cheap, although some of the stuff we are going to be using is some expensive equipment, and that includes Marble Mystery Oil. Now, y'all can do this with a variety of tools, but we're going to use what's available to us and that y'all may not have. Um, this mower right here is a customer vehicle. Customer states he could not get it running. Well, number one, the problem number one is she locked, buddy. Number two, this oil is nasty. <laughs> so, uh, number three, battery is dead. So, this is a, uh, I don't even know what this is. I know it's got a Briggs V Twin motor. It's a Airy, Arianus zero turn mower. So, hydrostatic rear end. Very weird. We don't know too much about this mower, right? So we don't know too much about this more, but um, without further ado, let's go ahead and roll the intro. Let him talk. Is this gonna be the last time I dress this? Cause quite frankly, I'm getting pissed off. Wanna be the bad guy on my hit list? Cause his shit don't get no talk. So he wants to put my name in his mouth. Boy, you better sit down. Man, it's mad that he's performing for an empty house, but I sold it out. My mama always told me that jealousy rears its face in the face of adversity. Then verses would come my way, but just ignore it, keep it sore, and leave them sore in the face. They ain't important. You're worth more than their entire estate. So just sit back and laugh at their ass. Keep on stacking that cash. Let them talk if it'll get them off. What they speak just means that they mad. They just want what you got, so they refuse to do what you did to cop them. So the only option that they get a rock with is to keep on talking while you keep on walking. So let them talk. I'm for a minute, but I'm back and got some. If you're gonna keep on talking behind my back, then I'll just do great things in your face. If you're gonna focus on my career, then it appears you're the one to blame. That you're gonna be in my shadow, asshole, staring at my backbone and asshole. You know it's a fact. All right. So as I said, the motor's locked up, so that's a big deal. That's actually a pretty huge big deal. Yeah, but that's actually a big deal. If your motor's locked up, you can't mow, right? <laughs> so today we're also going to work. Watch. <laughs> what? I said, if you do, I want to watch. <laughs> so we're going to teach y'all what simple tricks we use to unlock a motor when we get it in front, correct? But I get over. So, as y'all already know, we got the John Deere we're working on, then we got this other mower we're working on. Right now, we just got a dump load of them. Did not expect all of these, but we somehow got them, and we're just going to do what we can with them. Oh, boy, we ain't going to show you this one. Um, key okay. for the red mower in there, yeah. we'll fit it and turn it. Okay. So, pretty much any lawnmower key. But She, um... She no budgie, which is no bueno. I got a recipe. Also, take a look at that nasty oil. Yeah. Smell it. it smell like water and gas. It, it's it's funk. Just take our word for it, guys. We uh we kind of came up with a recipe for seized motors having working with that that super hawk. So um, and I tell you what. On three motors after that, it's it's worked. So our plan is we're going to take the plugs, we're going to shoot some marble down the end of the plug hole, and just let it soak for a little bit, and then and we're going to try to just kind of bump it just a little bit with a wrench. Um, what will probably end up happening is we're probably going to end up taking the valve covers and the heads off. Valve covers and heads off, so we can look directly at the piston. Now you do not have to do this step at home. This is just a recommended step that we recommend you to do if your motor is locked up because it's easier for you to access the piston and you can get a rubber mallet and kind of nudge the piston a little bit. Now, since we have a V-twin, that becomes another problem. It's just another cylinder to try to free up at the same time. So, it's going to be a fun video. There's only going to be one that's going to be kind of seized. Well, they both could be seized if they've been sitting for three years. Well, here's why. Because you got... An intake and exhaust, and an intake and an exhaust. The exhaust, if it's open, that's not going to seize your piston. If the intake is open, that's going to be where the water is just slowly over the time. And condensation. You, you, you can actually not have any water into your motor. And condensation. And it sees up. It could be the condensation of it just sitting. And this thing is set up for three to four years. So 
it could just be condensation. However, it's going to be it's going to be the cylinder that the intake valve is open. So this is going to be a very informational video. Same with the John Deere. We're going to try to teach y'all a couple things on those, but uh, we will see y'all whenever we do get to messing with this. For now, we're going to come up in and take a game plan up today. This one was not as frozen. Not as bad as we, we was anticipating, and hey, that's a really good thing. So, one of the first things you want to do is pull the plugs out. Man, that is going to tell you so much story. And this had water on the plugs, so the oil looked like it had water in it. So I said, okay, we got a, we got a little bit on the inside. Well, then I went ahead, and today's choice was free all. This is some really really good stuff really good stuff so i went ahead and i shot it up in a spark plug hole i mean went all the way around trying to coat everything on both of them and i let it sit 30 40 minutes then i came over here and i went ahead and i took the top off of it and i had me a little hammer and a little dowel like a copper dowel and i got right there up on that crankshaft and i just wanted to tap it just to just kind of give it some just a little bit of jar, and I wasn't beating the heck out of it, but you know, just some shocks. Then I found me a socket that fit it, and here's where a lot of people mess up. This is where you gotta have patience. Is they'll go, well, we, we soak the cylinders. Uh-oh, it ain't turning. It ain't turning, it ain't turning. Let me give it more force. Wrong, stop, right there. If you, if you go like that, and it don't start moving stop soak some more soak it more if you got to pull the valve covers and the heads to really get in there do it and what happens is is when you is when you if you have soaked your cylinders and you start doing this and it's not turning so you're wanting to give it more force you're going to rip your rings that's bad that's bad news so ask us how we know but in this case, on this motor, after I, I went after I did, uh, the water came out, and uh, and I soaked it down, and I kind of shocked it a little bit. I got right here, and just two fingers. That's all I like to do. I don't like to do this because I will. So if I'm doing this, I just kind of pull, and all of a sudden it went like that, and I went, uh oh, I got it. He will break something if he tries. So guess what I did? I stopped it's moving it's moving and your natural instinct is to let's take it all the way around this is another spot where you can mess up and you can there'll be a crispy spot kind of on there so take it on back take it on back and let it get there let it go past the spot that it was just kind of do this a little bit at a time like this taking it a little bit further each time and once you get to where you're 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 over here doing that i mean remember this is a game of patience right here guys what you're doing right here will make or break 99 percent of the time if you've got to rebuild this motor or not it's patience come on a little bit further take it back then once you get it up there you can almost do it. Now go for your full revolution. Don't go fast. We're still breaking in. And remember, we're draining this oil out, so there's not oil in here. So you can't go buck wild just yet. That's going to be a little bit. See, we got a full revolution, and I don't feel any drag. That's going to be good news, guys. Now, if it would have been more, I got right here, and we couldn't have done that, like I said, it would have stopped. 
we would have pulled these and we would have checked do we have a stuck valve pull the head if we don't have a stuck valve then we'll pull the head and that'll expose the, the cylinder and the piston and from there we would spray some penetrating oil up in there on both of them let them sit and take a little piece of wood just kind of or if you have or even better if you have a like a rubber rubber mallet you want to use a rubber mallet yeah, or you want, you want wood or rubber something that will not harm it uh if you have like a piece of rubber that one of those um what's the damn word that you that you use? mallet Ma no not mallet the whatever the heck you hit with the hammer when you're up it's best with the if you with have wood with a little piece of wood uh, we got lucky here so. don't use a dead blow hammer use a rubber mallet there are a difference there is a difference, on difference. so as you can see we're still draining i'm gonna let this matter of fact i'm fixing to pour a little bit more oil in here just to kind of flush it i'm trying to flush all this out and then we're going to go back with some decent oil that will get drained and then we're going to go ahead and just put the drill on it and just not buck wild we're gonna work it we're gonna we're gonna bring it up to letting it go now what what's gonna happen is is you did manage to break something though no this was already broken yeah uh-huh uh-huh so what's gonna happen is is as these pistons are moving your rings once they warm up they will expand and they will come back so after we've worked this motor for a little bit then we're gonna check compression and that's going to tell us the story of this motor right there. Um, so in a nutshell, this was better than I envisioned when we unloaded it yesterday. And when we unloaded this yesterday, I'll just have flashbacks and mental anguish of that Super Hawk all over again. Ten minutes, she was she was moving. Let me pour a little oil. Yeah, but we at least have a better system now that we we ain't on mowers we could take the door heads off. On that super rock we, we would have dropped the whole motor and do that. Uh, again guys, this is a this is a task of patience. And understand, you're gonna sacrifice a couple of quarts of oil. It's you're not going to drain this oil, put oil in it and call it done. You've got to essentially flush this motor. So I'm I'm flushing it like this watching what's coming out until it's coming out with pure oil but that's not going to be the end of it then i will fill it up with oil and and we'll run it with the drill and stuff like that and if we happen to get it running on its own cool but after 20 30 minutes of runtime that oil's going because this is the contamination that water so the quicker we can flush it once that my hot oil gets hot and get fresher oil the better chances of us not destroying the bearings see we done moved from the from the piston rings to the bearings that oil and that water get up in there and that water stays in the bearings gonna be gone so first things first though So, um, I'm ripped super clean, but, um, all right. So y'all can see the whole plastic assembly is off and there's some random wires laying out here. Well, yesterday me and my dad worked and we got spark to this. We also got the still annoyed to start halfway working, but it is not a hundred percent. Um, now getting spark, we still have a problem with that. We can get it, but we have to unplug the safety switch wires. And that's what these wires are right here. Um, these are actually our personal ones that we homemade because the old ones were broke. Um, now, there are multiple safety switches on this. So if you have a mower that's locked up and you get it or, and stuff and you need to get spark, check every safety switch. There's going to be one generally under the seat. There's going to be one generally on at least one of the zero turn arms. Generally two. And then there's going to be two in the switch. You got the key switch, safety switch, and then the... Uh, PTO one. The one we believe to be our fault is the PTO one because we know that there is two wires unplugged over here. We know for 100% fact there are two wires unplugged under this switch. Wait on. 
where we have an assumption it's the pto deal we're going to check that today um so i'm gonna bring y'all in for a close look and kind of show y'all what i'm talking about i apologize for the lighting our only lights are over here we haven't went and bought new lights yet so just kind of make shift with it guys so let's fold these up real quick and fold this forward so right here is the one safety switch and then you got one down here right there and there should be one over on this arm this arm is missing one these two arms are missing their safety switches so our mower does not have safety switches at all and there is no place for them to mount now we do have two wires right here that used to go to the something and then we have two wires up in here sorry for y'all being upside down in there those two we believe go to the pto and that's going to be what we check today our battery is still dead so what we're going to do today is we're going to jump this we're going to put a lead in both sides and jump this to test this safety switch that way we still can jump the motor over with the battery and well ultimately not have to have somebody sitting on here with jumper cables right up on their rear ah. pop should be pulling in very soon as it's 336 and he normally gets home about this time so that's what we're going to be working on today at least that's what the plan should be and then we might mess with the snapper some more i don't think we're gonna mess that one though so gonna be back to this very cool also so really we're teaching all the steps you need to go through to do a revival pretty much so we'll see y'all whenever we get to the dressing more of the spark crap and then we'll get to the carburetor so doing some digging i found something that i don't believe it's supposed to look like this I don't think it's supposed to be charred. Do you? No. We ain't getting no pass through. We need to, I need to pull that. So there's a piece of plastic that has now melted, and that's why there's a single wire here, which is not connecting to the prong that it correlates to on the key switch, which is why that prong that, that this thing goes to is so rusty and stuff. It's that rust prong. Yeah. So... I think part of our problem arises from there. We might have to do a little. Yeah, I did some digging around because I'm the only one that can figure out how the heck to get these out. So y'all can see right here, there's one prong that is rusted. That that correlates with that prong. Then that single one went here. Yes, sir. I wonder if that spade. I don't know. Female spade would fit that. I don't know, but I know this much. That's not supposed to look like that. Female spade. So, um, oh, yeah, should go on there. Oh, shit. Okay, guys, I don't know how clear that was out there. Actually, what I want to do real quick, I'm no electrician, but I don't think that's supposed to be like that stuff right there man can't tell me this didn't have no water getting in it yeah when they said this thing has some electrical issues look at the dirt down inside of yes it. they said this thing has some electrical issues it wasn't mine i think it's got a little more than just electrical issues I wish i had a whole bunch of first start maybe Here's the thing. Once this 
carburetors rebuilt, cleaned up, rebuilt. We'll go back together with it all, and I can bot. We'll have to start it like this, and I can bottle feed it. Just let the motor run, burn that oil and crap off. But she will need a starter. I mean, we can bottle. We can put the intake deal on there right now and bottle yeah. feed it. That but is. It's easier to assemble the car for that. Yes, um, it's easier. I won't. I won't go on a limb to say it needed that the starter relay was bad, but come on, man. Them contacts, wire wheel, you know, probably take care of it. A lot of fan noise, but we got a shop fan going. Uh, I really don't like this because um, that's 30 on that switch. It didn't solve the problem. Then a little $10 relay, but hey. You know what, but that switch is so faded. I'll make it work a while in the end. I'll make it work a while in the end. I kind of know the guy. I know him. I know him a long time. He's helped me a lot. So I'm not going to get him up on full shop prices. But you best believe he's going to be paying for all the struggles we went through. You having to fight for Spark two times. I just want to hear it one more time. So after about a day or so of working on this off camera, neighbor came up who works as an electrician, kind of said, uh, hey, you know, maybe what, told him there was resistors on the um, deal, and he said, well, hey, you know that needs resistors, huh? Yeah. So, um. What it happened is we, we made up some wires, and, uh, yeah, we put it all together. Mother Nature. But then we couldn't kill it. Yeah, I was the one who drove it yesterday because he drove this one and I was absolutely dying laughing on that one. This video is going to be finished up today regardless of if these blades work because this mower is running and driving now. Um, no, it's not going to be done until the blades are working. No, the video, this video will be done. The mower won't be done. Okay. Because this video has got to come out Wednesday. This, this has got a lot of progress made. As it sits right now, though, we do need to change the starter, and we do need to put a battery on it. But we did a lot of working on this PTO clutch yesterday, and then the wiring and stuff. And did a lot, lot of work of, off camera. A lot of free all was used to to get it free, and I come out here today, and we wasn't having this yesterday. It wasn't it wasn't engaging. So. We're fixing to uh, start it, and I'm gonna run it out here, and we're gonna see if this if the blades kick on because if they do, then that's an area we don't need to address no more. Because we were fighting that yesterday. A lot of work happened on this off camera. I'm thinking this video is gonna be around 25, 30 minutes, but again, now this this, this mower has you never know so much work. We have got hours and hours of just wire tracing and and arming things out this mower this mower was more of an electrical gremlin and electrical basket case than anything else and hold on one word whoever the hell came up with the idea of an electrical pto engage i got a word for you f you you are stupid
Well, I mean, it's 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 very convenient because you can just pull yeah. it. And stuff, hey, hey, but, but don't fix what ain't broke. But you know, this is man. I'm talking even the ground wire was bad, so we ran a new ground wire. Um, oh, all this stuff was bad. Oh my gosh, the key switch. Y'all seen the harnesses and stuff. Anyway, long story short, it it appears to be. Um, engaging so hopefully they engage we're gonna start her up and um i'm gonna get her out there uh don't fix what ain't broke that's my words well well let's put gremlins this is what's weird to me some electrical gremlins Add this to the list of the sketchiest stuff we've done. We're going to start, we're going to start it and then run the lights. Ready? Yeah. I'm going to give it a little, give, give a little choke. You're on the choke. That's choke. This is throttle. All I said, I want a little choke right there. No, the throttle needs to be up. We should never discuss that. That's the same with that. Some things ought to just come naturally, kids. Go. <laughs> Not quite there. Ready? So I just wild idea when we had the blades on we had the battery connected because I remember because I had to move the jumper cables because they were going to get caught almost so 
What if it does need a battery for the blades to work, Dad? That'd be even more messed up. Actually, yeah, it would. But, I can see it. I can see it. I've been sitting there going, why does this thing just keep starting with it up? constant 12 volt source and we do have a battery that's going to end up getting replaced but that battery shall not fit on this rover anywhere oh, maybe it's off no, off brake cool mm -hmm. ready yeah let's go They work. It just needs a constant 12 volt battery. Wait. Um, so uh yeah. So with that guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video off here so that way I can get to editing this throughout the week and get this out on Wednesday because it is Monday. Uh thanks for watching. That right here is how you troubleshoot. Troubleshoot, you unlock a motor and you do your own. Bring if your mower's not running, bring it back so you can actually mow. Cause you know, you go out there to mow, go turn that key, and all you hear is clonk, clonk. That's not a good sign. It means you ain't mowed in a while if your motor's locked up. Alright, so starter and battery. We're there. Uh, we can actually go ahead and start. Well, we gotta leave it off to get to the starter. Uh, Guys, this has been a fun a wire on Gremlin. Wait till you call the neighbor and tell him. He's gonna be like, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah, yeah. I like to call him better. I, I just, I remembered uh, when we were doing the, um, when we had the blades going, it was in the air, and I remember specifically moving the jumper cable out the way so that way yeah. it didn't get caught. So, hey, you know what? Wild hair ended up being right. Hey, that quick thinking saved $150. Not only that, it saved you tons of hours of fighting trying to figure out what the heck's going on again. Yeah, because I was getting a little tired. You were out here until about 7 o'clock yesterday? Yeah, 7, 7.30, just trying to figure some shit out man. so uh thanks for watching if you liked it you saw make sure you subscribe check out the membership and uh we'll see y'all in the next one peace My life, I'm